All right, here we go. Um, hello, everybody, and welcome to another Zoom chat. And we're talking about past lives tonight, which is super exciting. I'm Donna Frasca, psychic medium for the amazing natural mediumship group. And we have Sarah here. Sarah, do a little little say hi. Hi, I'm medium Sarah. I'm located in Northeast Ohio, and I'm also um, an admin with Donna in the Natural Mediumship Group on MeWe, which we love, and we use Zooms all the time. We do. And Sarah, thank you so much for all the beautiful graphics that you make, and and um, you know, we're just. I think we're a great team. <laughs> we're doing i love it we're just making yeah. it happen and we didn't even know each other and we're i you know. know yeah that's very very uh yeah you know, it's interesting you know when you know just picking up on energies of of other people across the across the globe it's like hmm, yeah no yeah yeah maybe yeah and it just it just happens you know just yeah it's good 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 and what what's what i like about us as a team is like there's things that you know i have a nice focus on and then you have a nice focus on and we're we're the same but a little different we're i think we're a good blend good blend yeah, <laughs> right. i think it's neat how we um have different scenarios we get to the end result but we have different techniques and they can be um, very complementary yeah. i've learned a lot of things that uh, from you that i haven't tried before and i tried like blindfolded readings and things like that yeah and it it's fun. So that's the point of coming on these chats. I think people will find good advice and you can take it home and try it. Yes. Know? So um, not only will um, hopefully people uh, or members will learn from the things that we say, but, you know, Sarah and I also learn off each other, which is pretty darn amazing. All right. So um, tonight we're, we're chatting about past lives and mm -hmm. um, it's, it's kind of a complicated topic because <laughs> Yeah. You know, I don't know, Sarah, if, if you looked into any of your past lives, but I did it once, but I, I had to use a, um, like a guided meditation, you know, it's, it's just, I mean, is that, have you had experiences with past life regressions? Yes, I have. And actually my daughter has, which is, um, something we could talk about because I like helping other people's kids mm. from I've learned with my own, but yes, I have, um, I didn't go through any hypnosis. Um, actually where I work, um, uh, Missy, the medium offers hypnosis oh. and I, I have her, I was going to pay her actually to do one for me. I thought it would be really fun. Yeah. Um, but personally, I found mine with automatic writing and meditation, um, to the best of my ability. It's kind of hard, I think because there's, I have nothing I can verify it against in the physical world, right. which past live readings difficult because people just have to look at your recommendations, see that you're a good psychic medium and take what you give them. That's it. Yeah. Well, um, I'm going to share a, a little story about the experience that I've had and chat about that a bit. Then I would like to hear a little bit about yours. Um, years ago when I was taking uh, my chakra classes, I, it was every Wednesday uh, for a year. I took classes and certifications and we dug deep in, into everything. And uh, one day we were doing a, um, it was a guided a past life regression. Oh, Joanne's coming in. Okay, hold on. Here we go. All right, Joanne is here. There she is. All right, Joanne, I, yes. Good, welcome. Hello, perfect timing. Hello, ladies. We kind of just started chatting about, uh, you know, past life regressions. So ah, that's, that's fun. Oh and just, yeah. Just to let you know, we are recording. It is oh, that okay? Okay, good. All right. Yeah. So I, I was I started saying that, um, you know, I was taking uh, all my classes and certifications and such. I met with my teacher and, and um, group once a week for a year and we talked about all kinds of all kinds of things and um one day we were going to have a guided meditation uh with a teacher and assistant you know i mean it was a small classroom oh we have somebody else coming in okay hold on all right so uh pat is in the house okay welcome pat just to let you know that uh, we are recording if that's okay all right. If, if for some reason it's not okay, you can um, write in the chat if you don't want to be uh, recorded. 
All right. Um, so anyway, uh, I was just uh, describing my um, experience with the past lives, and it was a guided mm -hmm. meditation. I wasn't under hypnosis. Uh, I just sat in a chair, and I had the teacher and the assistant, and there was only like five people in the class, and everybody, you know, sitting there, you know, take a deep breath, and and then they start, okay, now, you know, we're going to go into a past life. And they, they came up with all this amazing stuff just like that. I'm like, it's getting a little nervous. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I could do it. Cause they're like, oh, you know, I was this and that. And they started crying and I'm like, holy cow. <laughs> yes. I was nervous. I'm like, oh my gosh. And so I went last cause I was, I was nervous. And so I sat there and, and, you know, they said, okay, close your eyes, take a deep breath. And now we're going to go into your past lives. And it was so weird because the second that they said that, you know, it just flowed. And I, what I saw was an image, you know, being clairvoyant, everything's about images. It was a, um, like a round image. Uh, it was like a grayish blue, whitish ball, and it had spikes on it. And some spikes were pink. Some spikes were blue and it went all the way around this, this globe, like, like this one right here, my moon that I forgot to turn on. Mm. <laughs> and uh, so it had all these spikes coming around it. Some were pink, some were blue, some were long, some were short. So uh, it felt like each one of those spikes, which there was a lot of, was a life of mine as a male or as a female. So I said, well, I go, I see, you know, just what I described to you, I see, I see this ball with these spikes. I'm like, well, what do I do? And they're like, well, we'll pick a spike. I'm like, okay. So I picked a blue one. <laughs> and so as soon as I picked, you know, these, these spikes, you know, a spike, the images started flowing and flowing and flowing. And it went all the way. The first one went all the way back to when I was a caveman. <laughs> Oh, that's pretty far. Wow. Exactly. Really far. And I was ugly. <laughs> so, so the visual I had and the, and the lives were going like this, yes, you know, like only like 10 seconds because there's, there's so many of them. So then, then there I am all caveman-ish on, on a ledge and I have my whole family there. So I'm like, okay, I'm a caveman. And they're like, well, what do you know about this caveman? I'm like, well, I am a leader. I am the go-to cave man. And boom, once I, I said that out loud, that went away and another one came in. And this happened about um, three or four times, but they all had similar, um, a similar, a similar theme where another one was where I was another, another man, because I keep picking those blue spikes. And uh, I was another, I was a man and it was a like planes and a long wooden table, you know, it felt like a, like a Thanksgiving meal, a lot of people, you know, at this table, and they're like, okay, who are you now? Like, I'm still a man, but I, I am like the head of this whole house, this tribe, this whole household. And I am in charge of feeding and taking care of, of these people. So here we have somebody else in another leadership role. That went, that went away. Then another one came in about, you know, Cherokee Indians. And that one when I was a female and I had blonde hair and, and I, I, I was white with blonde hair. I didn't really fit into the Cherokee tribe. Um, and then I remember the chief coming up to me and being really, he was, he was my dad, but obviously not my dad because we were different races, which was kind of strange. And he was angry with me because I fell in love with somebody I should not have fallen in love with because apparently the Cherokee chiefs, they choose who they want their, their daughters, whether adopted daughters, you know, or, or daughters that they keep in their tribe. So I'm like, you know what, I, I love this, this man. And, um, you know, this is the one I want to marry. He got mad and pushed me and I fell down and I hit my head on the rock. And it was so strange. I saw my myself falling down and my head exploding on this rock. And I just started crying in the class, you know, and, and the detail was unbelievable. So I just started bawling my eyes out like a drop of a hat. Then that, that left, another life came in and the crying stopped. I mean, I was aware of everything that was going on, but it was, um, it was like a movie. Boom, 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 boom. And, the, and there was... Um, I think just one more, but it was the most um, important one of all. I 
think I feel like I mentioned this somewhere before in one of our chats. I'm not quite sure, but um, the 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 final life. It was a beautiful. Um, it was very very different flair from you know the the rest of the lives I was going through, and I saw a beautiful meadow, and because the the you know the the teacher and the assistant said, "What do you see? What do you feel? Describe what you see." Um, and, and then that's important when you go going through these past lives. And I didn't mention it with the other ones, but what do you see? What do you feel? You know, what's under your feet? Look around. And this is also important in mediumship readings. I also tell you know this to, to my students to um, when you're in a, a mediumship reading or even a meditation to look around. You know, a lot of people to sit quietly during a meditation, but it's it's in my experience, there's a whole new world that's right behind us, under us and above us. And that was so in, in, in this uh, particular past life. And so she, as I was describing this, this last past life that I was in before everything hit the fan, um, you know, I described the ground and, but I said, but my feet are not on the ground. They're like, what do you, what do you mean? I'm like, I, I'm kind of hovering above the ground. And they said, what else do you see? And I said, I see these two, two young girls. They're kind of like walking around. And um, they said, well, are, you know, who are these girls? I'm like, I don't know, they're, they're just girls. I'm watching them. I'm just watching these, these girls. And so um, all of a sudden my, my one, um, my teacher, she's very, um, very strong with telepathy. She's able to link up mind to mind. I've done that with her before, like three or four times. And so she was linking up to what I was seeing all of a sudden she gets up and she grabs my shoulder and she starts kind of, you know, freaking out a bit saying, leave her alone. And I, and I'm like, I couldn't, I didn't, I still, I'm still sitting there with my eyes closed and I'm like, well, I'm like, what's going on. And so, so here's a perfect example of instead of looking forward with closed eyes, I looked around and behind me to this side was like an attachment, like a, um, it was half animal, half like two parts of animals that didn't, it was a shape shifter. Okay. It was two parts of animals, an animal that were together that didn't, did not belong together. And it had like a dragon weird, weird face. And I'm looking at it and, and, and I got angry. I'm like, you know, why is this here? It was stopping my, it was stopping this last past life because once I found out who I was in this past life, it was going to be a game changer for me for the rest of my life. And this, this, for lack of a better word, this gargoyle thing just said, Nope, I'm not going to let her, I'm not going to let her do that. So I'm sitting there and my teacher's freaking out. And I'm like, just, just calm down. I said, I'm going to take care of this. So I, I, with my closed eyes, I turn around and look at this thing and I yelled at it. I'm like, you do not have permission to be in my energy in my life, in my org field, or prevent me from understanding who I am. And I said, so you are to leave and you are never to, and I'm actually screaming at this thing. <laughs> I don't know what I was screaming, but I was. So it, it, it had a look of fear on its face and it just bolted. I'm like, okay, that's gone. Let's continue. So as the, you know, uh, reading went on, it was like a, like this, the pick, the um, visual of my pet, this particular past life, froze. It was a free uh, freeze frame. So while I was arguing, arguing with the shape shifter, my past life was just a frozen image right here. When I, when I got rid of that, it continued. So I'm like, okay, I'm back in my past life. I'm following these two girls. So now my teacher and the assistant knew something unusual was kind of going on here. She, and they said, who are you? And I'm like, who am I? And the teacher said, yes, in your, in this particular life, who are you? And I, and, and I, and I kind of, I stopped because I had to think about it for a second because it felt really different. And um, my teacher said, are, are you human? And I said, no, I'm not. And she said, are you an angel? I said, no, I'm not. Then she said, who are you? And I said, I am a spirit guide. And so what my role was in that life, I was a spirit guide for those two girls. That's why I was hovering over them and following them around because that was my job 
as a spirit guide to, to, um, to guide these two girls. And now that I think of it, in my book, um, I, I, Joanne, I think you, I think both you girls might have my my book. I know I know I think uh, yeah I think you both do. That um, in the one um, chapter about you know traveling to Africa, you know where I had the time travel dream, I was a spirit guide also in that dream. So it's happened to me before. So that life was a, a big game changer you know, for me. Uh, so it was trying to be prevented by this little gargoyle. But somehow um, it, it taught me that in past lives, I was some type of leader, some type of teacher, which I kind of am, you know, in, in this life. I mean, I, I do teachings and, um, you know, I just have that you know personality where I like to share information and, um, you know, uh, in some situations, just take the bull by the horns and, you know, just do, you know, like a mom role or, or whatnot. Um, but also the spiritual side, uh, apparently there's a, like a part of me that also, you know, is the reason I do all this stuff because it's, you know, I guess in, in one, in a few lives, I was a spirit guide. So I, I don't know, can you, can you switch from being a spirit guide to a person? I mean, this is something to, to learn about energies. Joanne is saying, yes, you know, th these are, these are energies, you know, but they're, but yet they're alive. So within us, we are still human, yet we're still very spiritual people, right? Oh my gosh. So anyway, that that was so when that and this only took like maybe ten minutes or so. This this uh, class that I was in. So then I opened up my eyes and I'm looking around I'm like, wow, that was fun. And I turn around and look at the class, and the class was like, you know, there are these really big eyes. And like, um, I'm gonna take a break now. I'm like, I said, oh, I, I think that was a little intense. I, I go, maybe we should all take a little little break. Uh, but anyway, um, my point of the whole thing is when you, if you are in a, a past life regression, um, meditation, self meditation, uh, the tools that you visualize that you could use to to help you along is perhaps use that image that I had of, of the ball with the spikes on the end, or I thought of something really cool. Oh, this is heavy. Piece of wood. Visualize um, a piece of wood and and. You know, see all the lines. We we all know what that means. These are the the years. You know how old the the tree is. You can visualize a a tree. You know, just a a cutting of it. This is a piece of cedar. Um, this is a resin my friend made for me. It it actually you could see you could see through it. It's really pretty when the light goes through it. But you can visualize each line as a life. So if you're meditating, visualize this piece of wood and say, okay, I'm going to pick this line, and that line will be the life. That you're going to revisit so it's just a nice visual that you might want to try that is fascinating and i'm totally going to do it i love that <laughs> excellent <laughs> let me know how it goes <laughs> yeah I mean, that's a great way to that's a great way to focus your energy because you have all of these all of these stories inside of you there are so many people who they go through the i mean i've been told more than once that I was, uh, I think, sexually abused at some point. And I certainly have absolutely no memory, no vibe, no nothing from this lifetime. You know what? So I'm assuming that this wound uh, goes, goes, goes back into, into another lifetime. Plus I've done some regressions like the ones you're talking about. No spike ball, but, and I can't remember exactly what process they use now that I think about it one of those weird blanks um but I had several experiences of uh, uh, vision experiences and feelings in my body and stuff of, of 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 being in in several past lives and there was a lot of this um getting killed in violent ways in the past for some reason I don't know if we all go through that yeah. or what. It's and, like and I, actually, very dramatic. I and I don't know if Sarah knows this or not, but um, I think I connected with you, um, Joanne, when I had that channel message about one of your past lives. Uh, um, I, I didn't. I don't think I kept the paper, um, but it was it was so strange and random. I was just in my bed, relaxing, sitting up, and then I see the piece of paper with a hand. Whenever I see that. That is my signal to say, okay, you're getting a channel, get your paper ready and start writing. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, 
okay? And, and I'm in my room watching TikTok, okay? And then all of a sudden I see the paper. I'm like, okay, sure, <laughs> fine with me. And then um, it was three pages long and I had my eyes closed and I'm writing these things. Then when I opened up my eyes, it was perfect penmanship. It was not like a like a second grader. Should have kept it. I don't I don't know where it went. Um, but Joanne, it is for you. I know a hundred percent it was for you. Huh. Um, because at the bottom of it, it said tell Joanne. Yeah, you sent that to me, that part yeah. of it. I, I, yeah, I gave yeah, you that. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you gave me a snapshot of that part. Yeah. That was really weird. But it was <laughs> a long story short, you know, because we're well, it is a past life thing. It was it was this woman, she had a name, mentioned her sister, it was a train. She did get stabbed. She was pregnant, but it was a, a, a violent situation. Um, she said, I'm afraid, help me. It was 1823 when this happened. Uh, she mentioned her, I mean, all these just two columns on each page, three pages long. Um, it mentioned somebody with blonde hair and a red hair, red hair. That's why I mentioned you, this girl and her sister. Um, mentioned a man on the train. I'm scared. Help me. It, it was like I was reliving this time back in 1823. It, I'm, I'm hands down. I know it was one of your, your lives, whether you remember it or not, because the very last thing was tell Joanne. And I love you dearly, girl, but I was not thinking of you in my room when I was looking on TikTok. Oh, yeah, right, 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 right. So that, right, right. That's, how no, that's cool. That's cool. It might be another one. I do have um, one vision I had that I was stabbed in a past life long before I met Donna. And she doesn't know anything about it uh, until I until she started talking about this. And then I said, oh, OK, and um, I know I, I think I can't remember if I was the blonde or the person who stabbed me was the blonde, but it was supposedly my my current daughter. And whether she was male or female in that lifetime, I don't remember. Interesting. But but it, the, we, we had a little joke, you know, when I was going through these past life regression sessions about the whole uh, thing, because your 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 family members often travel with you and come back in different roles, depending on the just for the general audience or whatever, uh, uh, come back in different roles in different lifetimes and stuff. So. Wow. Uh, I thought that was fascinating that you connect it up with whether it's a different one or not. I don't know. I can't remember period. Uh, sometimes some of my visions had indications of what time frame it, it was in, but this one was not like that. So, well, the thing, the thing of it was, is that I needed to share that with you. And when things are so, and, and Sarah, you understand this when, when things are so incredibly random, you know, it's, and people ask that, well, how do you know if you're a mediumship? How, you know, how do you know you're not making this stuff up? Cause it's so flipping random. Like I said, I was literally on my bed, like, like this, looking at TikTok, looking at, you know, how to dry my herbs or something silly. And then I saw the, the paper and pencil. I'm like, okay, here we go. And then the whole thing, three pages, two columns, perfect pen, penmanship, this woman screaming for help in 1823. Tell Joanne. So <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, anyway, thanks, Donna. It was great. It was great validation. And um, it really didn't surprise me because I understand what you mean. I'm not um, I don't do psychic readings for people, but I, I or anything. But I, I am um, I'm familiar with and have experienced messages. And it's not the same thing as a nighttime dream although they are related i think and it's because a lot of times you're awake and so it's just not the same thing and then it, it it's not it has a different quality about it just like what you're saying it's not something you're you're making up in your head in the same way that you would do something else Absolutely. and so i can see in a genuine psychic medium is going to be coming from that connection rather than just rather than starting out wanting to to figure out how to how to um, use leading questions, you know, to to, to get information about right. something to give people a reading or whatever. It's not the same thing, but um, yeah. So, One last question you. before you know, I'd like to hear from Sarah about her, yeah. her experiences. How do you feel about Joanne? How do you feel about trains? Uh, Trains are okay, except for one thing. I was really super triggered when I saw a very old movie. I have no idea. 
I so said, it's the same thing with people drowning. I have another past life reason for that one. But I, there was a, I'll never forget this. There was a, I, I don't remember how old I was when I saw this movie. I don't think I was a small child. I think it was when I was older. But it was like a movie from the 1930s and there were these boys who were playing around the train yard, okay? And uh, they made a mistake. And one of them got run over by the train and his legs were, had to be amputated, both of them. And then it went on to other parts of the story and I don't even remember what they were because I'm, I was just fixated on this one thing and I could still feel the fear and the pain and stuff. And this was just a regular movie I was seeing with this kind of event in it. That's, and I was like, ooh. That's, that's interesting weird. that you said fear and pain with that particular yeah. part of the train. And also in that one life, there was definitely fear. There was definitely pain. So wow, yeah, 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 yeah. Emotions yeah. that are similar. Right. Well, thank you for so I think I think my reaction to that movie is probably related to what you were talking about. Yeah. Perhaps. Well, thank you for sharing that. Okay, uh, so no um, that's my story about the past life. Sarah, would love to hear your experiences. Well, I love that you guys had confirmations because it's really hard to confirm past lives. So that's kind of neat that Joanne had that. That's cool. Um, I had to move, forgive my uh, setup today um, since I'm sitting in the recliner. So one thing I want to mention about past lives is birthmarks in this life. So um, I didn't hear that talk about yet. So I figured I'd pop that in here. Um, I have a bullet size birthmark um, right where my heart would be. And so I feel that that was one of my past lives related to how I died. Um, I have had some other interesting things. When I dream, I can dream in fluent French. Um, I was always drawn to the French language. So um, that's what I took in school. And I learned enough to know that when I was dreaming, it was far beyond what I could do in speaking. But um, I understood that I really was speaking the language. And Spirit Kitty's here. <laughs> so <laughs> just sitting on the side of the chair. Um, so that was one thing. I think the most interesting thing that has happened, because we had a psychic when I was growing up, my mom always had one come over. Her name was Pat Beer. And I want to credit her for quite a few things in my life um, for spirituality. I was very lucky to have someone that was a real person that was a true psychic helping me in person. Um, and that was in the 1990s. So she told me I was a minor in my past life. And I died crushed and I was a man in that life um, I also have a problem with like boats and water and my friend made me go on a cruise with her and I, although I had fun I had such big fears and I think present life fears they make a big difference um, in a link to the past life regressions um, my daughter, when she was really little, and I posted it on my page, so on my Niwi, I will save it and I'll post it into this chat so you guys can read it. Um, it was written many years ago. She's 12, so she would have been a little one like in pull-ups. I think she was maybe three. She said that she got shots in her belly and her teeth turned black and the man pulled them out and she was a little boy. Now, this is a little kid, like this is a little one. And she often said she was a boy. And I would say, no, honey, you may have been one time, but right now you are a little girl and this is your new life. I don't, I didn't lie to my kids about any of my beliefs. I just said, this is the way I believe. So I would tell her like, yes, we got to experience things in the past, but in this life, this is what we do now. And I'm like, you're a little girl now and she fought me on that um, because she swore in her past life that she was a boy so um, I found that very interesting and now she um, is very spiritual at age 12 she works with her crystals she's just really um, I think evolved for her age because she was allowed to be but that um, 
that psychic message was very odd. And she has um, really bad teeth in this lifetime. Now she didn't have those teeth when she was little, but in this lifetime, she's got some teeth issues. So that, you know, um, she brushes her teeth and everything, but it's like the crooked, um, they got to put a spacer thing in, they got to do all kinds of stuff. And um, I really think that sometimes what happens in our past life can similarly come into this one. It creeps in, I think, in ways so like my fears and the way she felt about her body as a three-year-old and now she she understands those things were past life and I think when you allow them to do that they heal if people say oh no if I would have said oh you're being silly those things don't heal I feel like if I heal, helped heal her so that she can have a really nice future and enjoy being Elena who is wonderful and magical so I thought that was really weird and we have it all written out so I can share that with you. My mom called the psychic immediately over the phone and shot a check to her in the mail because back then you pay with checks. And um, she told my mom about these things because we didn't know about this stuff back in the 90s. I didn't know about any of this. And um, my mom didn't either. So Pat was the one that would teach us about those things. I know that I was a female in my past lives. I knew I was a male in my past lives. Um, and I think that those energies are really cool in this life because you just take that with you. Sometimes I need to know how to be a dad in this house. Sometimes I need to know how to be the mom in this house. And I pull on my spiritual soul to help me, you know? So I pull those different energies in like, I don't know. I always think of my husband as a big, strong man. So sometimes I have to say, okay, I have to be strong today. You know, I have to have my own strength. And I think it just really pulls through. I mean, I was a minor, that was a hard job. So I can pull that strength. And, and I think our past really beneficial to us. One thing that I did, and I didn't get the feedback because she's, she's not where I'm at, at as a medium. Um, she, doesn't really practice or anything. She runs the front desk at where I work, but we met before that. And we did soul gazing where everything is black. Everything you have on is black, completely dark room. You have a medium behind you on each one and there's a process to it. So I'll start, stop there because I don't want anyone to do this. Um, but you basically start seeing their face change because you're looking right in the other person's eyes. And I was able to completely describe her Peruvian roots. And I went and on, I went online and gathered all the information and tried to show her pictures of exactly what I saw. So when I did, um, I think that that was pretty neat because I was able to, I don't know anything about Peru or Peruvian history. I just don't. And, um, Everything I saw in my mind when I was looking into her soul came forward on the internet for me to match the headdresses and everything. Wow. So I enjoyed doing that. It is dangerous. People should not do it. Just, you, I think you have to be with multiple trained professionals because it's scary and um, it's unsafe. You can go too far over. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for that disclaimer, because we certainly don't want anybody to do that. No, and I did not tell you all how to complete yeah. it or anything else. There's a lot to it. That's just a little tidbit. There's a ton you have to do. Sarah, quick question. Um, and, and also, Joanne, when when um, you guys dream, do sometimes in your dreams, are, are you sometimes male or you're sometimes female? Because I've had dreams where I was definitely a guy or definitely a woman, you know, girl. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have been male and female in my dreams. I believe that's soul energy coming through mm -hmm. when you need it. And it can be, like I said, coming through to teach you what you need. So, you know, you're pulling on your path energies to teach you. So that might be the, the vision of yourself that you remember. You know, I love that you brought up the, um, point about the birthmarks because when I was getting one of my you know certifications the teacher you know was was doing a, a she kind of was really pushing our limits she's like okay I, I have a 
a birthmark, you know, on my body, you know, see if you can pick up, pick up where it is, what it is and how I died. I'm like, so what the hell is that? You know? <laughs> so uh, I was like, well, well, wait a minute. And, and then I thought about it and, and exactly what you said, um, based on the shape of the birthmark is how you died in a, and also how, how light or dark, if it's a dark, you know, um, birthmark, it's one of a recent past life. If it's very, oh. very faint, it's a way, 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 way older, you know, at life. So, and, and if it's a, a birthmark, that's like oblong like that, it's a stab wound, you know, cause it's, it's, um, you know, the shape of, of, of the knife. So in a, in a bullet wound um, could be, you know, bullet birthmark mm -hmm. rather, um, could be like just one, you know, circle or like a rat shot. It could be a series of freckles, mm -hmm. like one, one hole and like a series of, around it. Or it could just be um, like my husband has a, a birthmark on it on his head and it, it's just an irregular kind of shape and it's a decent size. <laughs> so I went up to him and I said, you know, in a past life, you fell down, you hit your noggin, and that's how you died. He's like, you know, please don't do your spooky stuff on me right now. He says, <laughs> I was like, I'm telling you, that's how you got your birthmark. <laughs> I'm not allowed to do spooky stuff with my husband. He said, no more. I said, okay. Yeah, yes. Every now and then when, you know, it gets uh, too intense, he's like, no, he goes, no spooky stuff right now. <laughs> I was like, that's how you got your, that's how you got your birthmark though. Years, you know, many lives ago, you fell down, you hit your head and you died. Yeah, well, right. no, I I gotta give if 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 the guys if the guys are are at the at the very least if they're if they're just making a little bit light of the spooky stuff because that's not what they're here for um, for some reason then uh, that's pretty good because there are a lot of people who uh, have a really amazing connections and they have no one to talk about. Yeah. to talk to about them that's why one of the reasons a group like this is really good i mean i have a sympathetic partner at this point but my first husband was a lot more skeptical uh and so it's it's good even if they're not all into it like you are it might actually be too much going on if that were the case but it, it the, the fact that they that they do um basically accept what you're doing and yeah. and still support you as a person oh, definitely definitely yeah. and stuff so that that's that to me i think i i think that's that's really something to celebrate because a lot of people have to you know have to keep it all under wraps yeah uh, no there, there was, there, there was with, no with, with their whole family like their parents and you know everybody how does your dad respond to this or or does he know my dad yeah your dad oh. donna he he's like a mini me that's where i got it from he he oh he, he wanted to join this the zoom but you know he was having dinner and he's writing a book so he i mean like i said dad i go i'll record it for you and, and send you the link but you know you're gonna be having yeah. dinner you know while, but he definitely he's like oh that's that's i want to i want to say i don't know if he can make it tonight because it starts at seven and you're gonna be eating dinner at seven so we're gonna come in 45 minutes later so he wanted to be here, you know, so he's, Oh my God, that is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you know, going back to, you know, a partner who will listen versus not, I mean, I came out of my spooky closet full blast. I mean, this was in 2014 and I, you know, I oh. wrote this in my book, you know, and I said, um, you know, I was drinking a lot of tequila that night. Cause it was, uh, it was, it was one of those things where, you know what, I'm, I'm going to put everything on the line and I cannot hide who I am between the things I see, the things I do. Uh, I just can't, can't, cannot fake it, cannot hide it, nor do I want to. So, so here we are in the backyard and I'm all juiced up. <laughs> and I said, Hey, listen, I got, I got to tell you something. So he's like, okay, what? I'm like, I, I don't know how you're going to take it, but and he's thinking, okay, you're having an affair, <laughs> you're gay, you have a, you know, children that you don't, you know, that you can tell me about. <laughs> so yeah, 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 yeah. All I'm like, stuff. no to all of that. So I told him, and um, like I said, he he, uh, you know, accepted me, you know, as and he basically said, I I already know that about you, and and you know, kind of unfolded there. You know, I don't, don't want to bring that up because it's a nice part of the book, um, but there's times when you know. 
the experiences like what we're talking about past lives, there's no way that I could even attempt to tell him that he'd be like, what? I say, like, he'd be like, no, we're, we're good. I'm like, all right, never mind. <laughs> I'll tell my group. But yeah, so that there's, there's certain, um, you know, things that you, you share and you don't share with, with partners, but thank goodness for groups and videos like this, where we can talk about anything and share stories and the validations, like Sarah said, you know, how do you even prove a past life? You can't, unless you have a, like I, I constantly say, unless either I have a wild, vivid imagination or well, this stuff is the real deal, you know, it's like, <laughs> but yeah. it's so awesome if you can get, you know, somebody to say, you know what, I, I, that resonates, or they can back it up with a little validation, because it makes a big difference. I, I want to uh, ask you ladies a question, if I can. Oh, Sarah, go ahead. Sarah? Oh, I was just uh, going to say, probably like you guys did today, multiple mediums and psychics, um, not knowing what the other one says, to get that past life reading now you may have different past lives that come through but maybe some will ma marry up and that would be your proof like today yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly it's it's a subject it's a, still a subjective proof obviously it's not scientific well, but that's a method that people use to find out certain things about how the world works that doesn't mean it's the only way to know what's going on about anything um but i wanted to ask if either of you had not only uh I, I, you talked about feelings. You talked about uh, visual uh, narratives and things like that that you had storytelling about. Have you ever been just sort of blasted with energy when you were in the middle of a of a past life regression situation? I'm turn that over to you, Donna, because I really haven't sat and done like deep regressions, oh, okay. like have Donna so you tell her about yours because you've really gotten down into it okay um what do you mean blessed with energy Joanne what, what do you well I had I had one experience that where um I was working with a friend of mine who is a very strong channel and we did something where she put her hand on my shoulder and I suddenly had a vision from like the renaissance period I was it was some kind of celebration, probably a wedding. And this one young man turned around. His head was, you know, he was turned away from me. He turned around and looked at me. And I could feel this energy like going from way up there all the way through my body to the earth and back again. And it, it just, it was like, it was like I was being filled up with, I would just call it the the biggest love I have ever felt in my life. And it really wasn't about that person. It was just like, I had this channel of basically white light, if you wanted to put a picture on it, going through my body so fast and so powerfully that I had to step away wow. from her. Once I broke the connection mm. from her hand to my shoulder, it settled down. But I thought I was going to blow up. Wow, I, th I think you're talking about what do they call it? Psychometry, where you touch something and you can feel the energy and tell the story. Oh, maybe that's it. Yeah, this has, oh. I don't think it has anything to do with past lives because no, in reference oh. to past life, no energy, just like I'm sitting here. It was just a knowing. It but was a knowing. I, okay. I, I, okay. You, I have had experience with psych, I believe it's psycho psychometry, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, oh. Yes, definitely, okay. where I could. Um, uh, touch something and um, just just know and see things. Uh, Crying. To, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, to give I know that example, word. I didn't know what it was. Years ago, uh, huh. I was in my room uh, folding laundry and one of my face, I was on Facebook at the time. She sends me a message and she said, I'm missing a photograph. Can you find it for me? <laughs> oh, and I'm like, you know, I really love that you, you girls really have such, um, you know, like, like you think I have this, 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 <laughs> this superhuman ability that one minute I'm folding clothes, next minute, I'm going to find your photograph for you. But that's exactly what I did. And the thing mm -hmm. of it is, you know, as soon as we get our ego out of the things that we do, it just flows. I'm like, sure, I'll help you find a picture. I put my clothes down and I had my iPad, you know, cause that's how she was communicating with me. I just had my iPad, um, she had she had a picture of of 
um, a digital picture of the photograph she was missing. She just didn't know where it was. So I just took, I just knew what to do. I took this uh, iPad and I put my hand over it and images just flashed before my eyes. And I was like, okay. And I saw a, a rug, a closet, blah, blah, blah. And I just, and I saw the t where it was exactly. And I'm like, okay, it's in a closet. And she's like, no, I looked in every closet. I go, it's in the closet with the beige rug. She's like, with the beige rug? I go, yeah. I go, it's in the closet. The closet has the beige rug. It's up on the shelf in the tan metal box. She's like, okay. I'm like, okay. So back to laundry, I went and folding my laundry. They're thinking nothing of it. I'm like, that's ridiculous. And so about a half hour later, you know, I get another notification. She goes, well, guess what I found? And guess what closet I was, I found it in. It was exactly where I said it was. It was in the closet that had the beige rug in it. And it was up there hidden under all kinds of stuff, but it was in a, in a metal metal cabinet. So that's, uh, to answer your question, Joey, that's, I believe it's psychometry. You know, we oh, touch oh, something. Okay. you can touch okay. a watch or I think, um, what's that medium, Sarah, Tyler, uh, what you call it, does that. Um, oh, I know Cindy Kaza does it. Um, Tyler Henry. Yeah, the, oh. the, he's like 20 something years old. You know, amazing, amazing. You know, but he just touches, he scribbles and scribbles, but he'll touch something. Oh. And, you know, the, these images just appear to him. It's really, oh, really cool. I see. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you just sort of like that touch was somehow got that whole channel thing going. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So you huh. probably just uh, unraveled the ability that you have. So, so work on that, Joanne. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> I used to be able to, I used to be able to turn off computers for a little while. Okay. I first, you can turn mine off in 10 minutes. <laughs> no, 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 no. But wait, no, I don't do that anymore. But when I first uh, sort of, uh, I don't know, awakened, I guess uh, you could call it in my, in my early forties, there was a lot of, uh, you know, disruptive emotional energy around it. It's like being a baby Christian, being all way too, all too excited about everything and too into it, and and yeah. you know, you and and your your first marriage is falling apart because of some of these things, and and you're just like, wow, I can see this and I can do this, and so I get a feeling in my head, and if I was sitting with somebody, their computer would go off. <laughs> it would be almost like a pressure in 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 my forehead and. And I, I was, I was accidentally doing stuff like that for a little while, but then I sort of got, eh, you know, I kind of settled down, the energy settled down and I quit doing it. And you know what guys too, um, that's a good point uh, what Joanne's bringing up, no matter what ability that you have, um, if it's turning off computers, if it's psychometry, is it whatever, whatever you know, yeah. ability you have, if it's too intense, um, what I usually do is visualize a, a dial you know, like on a dial on a radio oh. or TV and just turn it down. Cause my third eye, if you, if you look really close, it's always red right here. I have to put makeup on it to hide it. It's just oh. too much all the time. Um, wow. So, and, okay. and even my teacher said, Donna, your third eye. I'm like, I know she goes, can you, I'm like, all right, all right. So I'll <laughs> visualize like this big blue circle and I'll visualize smaller, please. You know, the, the blue um, indigo of the shock or a third eye. And I would visualize it smaller, small until it matches like the rest. So if any, anybody has these abilities that, that you want to turn up or turn down, turn down. use that. Oh, I did. that's a great idea. Yes. Oh, can I share something with you guys? Cause yes. you might like to go, you might like to work with these. Yes. These are past, these are basically lives for, um, um, for uh, cards for reading past lives. Oh, wow. And they're called the Phoenix cards. I got them a long time ago. I'm I don't a know if it still exists. Beautiful. Um, and the, what, what it is, is the cards depict different cultural and geographical places, like you were talking about seeing that lady, in, you know, in her Peruvian stuff. And so you don't, you don't, you can, you can do whatever you want. So you do know you have to pull a card for us, for, for Sarah and I, right? Before we go, okay. you, you do know well, that, right? I'll, I'll, I'm going to do I'm going to do that a little bit differently because these cards are meant to be pulled based on what you feel from looking at them. They're not random. Mm -hmm. You don't just pull them to do a reading. You actually lay them out and look at them and see which ones resonate with you and 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 create a uh, oh wait a minute that looks familiar. Maybe I would, did live in Hawaii at one time or oh. something. You know that kind of thing. So they're they're a way of of prompting a person who's um, working on 
past life regression stuff to see what what that what kind of life Makes and what sense. place or whatever cool. they resonate with. So I'm buying I that. Thought that was interesting. I'm buying that as soon as we're off. Okay, here. okay. <laughs> buying it. <laughs> yep. Anyway, it's the Phoenix cards. La, I love la, it. La. All right, ladies, is there, is there anything else that um, anybody wants to share? Uh, we're 7.53. I thought we would keep this to a half hour, but that never happens. Never, ever, ever. <laughs> is there anything that, Sarah, that you'd like to share before we split? No, but maybe one day we can do a more intuitive uh, spirit class, less past lives, you know, to be a little more intuitive, like, trying to read each other oh, a oh read, read a past life mm-hmm. yeah maybe we can try and help each other yeah do that, some fun that, reading to help each other that sounds like a challenge i'm up for it uh, uh, it is a challenge yes it is one more thing <laughs> before we go is this is a um petrified wood remember what i said about using the wood as a, a guide to oh. help you uh if you I want have- a crystal you know to use a petrified wood obviously because also it has the lines the in it lines. and you know, wood, it's grounding, yet it has many lives. Um, right, 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 right. In oh. it. So, yep. And the fossils, you can also fossils. Yes. Too. Yeah, yeah, good idea. All right. So, um, if you don't have anything else to share, wait a minute. I think there's a chat. Somebody. I just oh. put the Phoenix yeah. cards title oh, see, and the author yeah. in there if you guys oh, if good. Wants to pull that up. Susan Shepard. Nice. Beautiful. Okay, good. All right. Well, this was a this was an awesome uh oh. I, you know, thank I, you I, again, I, Donna, for the for the it. train for the train lady. I, I that that really filled in some blanks, I think, from from something I'd only seen a little piece of before. Hmm. So well that's great. Uh, that's really Thanks to you. Thank the universe for that one. I'm just the medium, the thing in the middle, the vessel, the messenger, as they say. (laughs) And and you you never know when, like I said, I was just in my bed looking at TikTok. You just (laughs) random, 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 random. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. This was, this was so fun. And um, Sarah, thank you for, for everything you do. And, And I know you had a little technical difficulties tonight. Everything worked out fine. Oh yeah, I got my spirit kitty oh, line. Yeah. Like I have mine down down right there, spooky. She's she tried to jump up on me, but she's she said, Oh, look at you cute. Aww. But um I don't mind sitting in the recliner because I get to cuddle, so it's fine. Um, sounds, just, sounds comfy. Quick proposition. I'm gonna order those cards. Okay. And I'd like to do a zoom with you and record it if you wouldn't mind a practice session. Since you have the cards and I will have the cards, you can go through and pr- pick the ones out. Oh, you know right. I, mean? I understand. Yes. We can do it together because you would already have them and it would be a yeah. way we could on Zoom and then I could practice and you could practice. Okay. That's, That's great. Right. Yeah. Just wrong. let me know. I'm happy to, to participate in that. That's fun. It's been a long time since I've used these because I kind of did all my past life stuff that I thought I was going to do. So. But no, you never know. More. There's more. There's more. As Donna says, there's more. All right. Yeah, that'd be cool. Thank you, ladies, for joining and uh, everybody else who joined us tonight. And um, again, uh, anybody in the group, if you have questions about this amazing uh, Zoom, please, you know, feel free to ask any of us uh, if you have questions about past lives. Okay. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks, Thanks Donna. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.